Welcome back to Ghost Pirate Entertainment. I'm your host, Kanan Becker, and today we do another deep dive into Prime Video. And let's get to the list. It stains the sands red as a 2016 Canadian-American horror movie. Directed by Colin Minahan and written by Minahan and Stuart Ortiz. It stars Brittany Allen, Juan Brindinger, and Marwin Montessor. The story is about a woman who is relentlessly pursued through the desert outside of Las Vegas by a single zombie. I was absolutely blown away by this movie because I just put it on on a whim. I felt like I had heard the name bantied about somewhere, but I didn't remember anything about it or what it even was. And I was really struggling to put together the final couple movies for this list. So I was like, what the hell? I'll put it on for a few minutes. If it's trash, I'll turn it off. And in the first few minutes, I was like, oh no, this is gonna be one of those movies made by a guy who's trying to get out of the porn industry and funding this little movie with probably extras from porn movies. Like it just has this trashy kind of feel about it. But for some reason I hung on for just a few minutes longer and then all of a sudden it transformed into this absolutely hidden gem that is really a blast and actually extremely well done. It is a very small budget kind of movie. It doesn't have much in the way of anybody. I mean, it really, the whole movie is for the most part just these two characters. This woman traveling across the desert and this zombie following her. That's basically it. There's a few little bit parts from other actors, but but that's for the most part what this movie is. And that doesn't sound like it would be that great. It doesn't sound like it would be that fun. But I'm telling you, this movie is so captivating and yet it's funny. There's so many layers to it. It's heartwarming. It has moments of dread. It has moments of thrills on the edge of your seat. Like it's just got all these things packed into this little movie. And for a movie that definitely has a tiny budget, you really have to give it up for the writer, the director, and the main star, Brittany Allen, because she is pretty much the thing that absolutely keeps you glued to the screen. She gives a really powerful performance in this that really shocked me. I did not expect this actress to pull this off in this kind of movie because it just doesn't seem like it's gonna be that from the outset, but it turns into something so much more. In a lot of ways, it reminded me of Swiss Army Man, which is another just fantastic indie movie with a micro budget but that's really zany and quirky and unique in a lot of ways, just like this. This is an absolute hidden gem and one that I highly, highly recommend. The Black Phone is a 2021 coming of age supernatural horror movie directed by Scott Derrickson and written by Derrickson and C. Robert Cargill. It's adapted from the 2004 short story of the same name by Joe Hill. It stars Mason Thames, Madeline McGraw, and Ethan Hawke. The plot focuses on an abducted teenager who uses a mysterious black phone to communicate with the previous victims of his deranged captor. I am a part-time magician. Are those black balloons in there? Would you like to see a magic trick? This was absolutely one of the best movies last year. The year was so stacked though with horror movies that it just didn't quite make my top 10. The same with Nope. But they were both right up there with my favorites of the year. This movie just has this true crime meets mystery supernatural thing going on that feels so well produced in every way. I love the look of it and the style. Just the way they took it back to the 70s. It feels so authentic, so believable, and really just sucks you in. And the performance from both the young leading actors is absolutely phenomenal. 
There's a couple scenes in particular that just have my jaw on the floor. So emotional, so powerful, and it delves into these other issues to do with growing up and abuse and things like that. And it does it in such a well done way that it's moving on so many levels, but it doesn't forget to be scary and thrilling and feel very horror at the same time. This is a phenomenal movie that if you have yet to check out, this needs to be the next thing that you watch. What did you do? What did you do? Pet Cemetery. Now I'm going to play with you. <laughs> Pet Cemetery is a 1989 supernatural horror movie. It is the first film adaptation of Stephen King's 1983 novel of the same name. It's directed by Mary Lambert and stars Del Midcalf, Fred Gwynn, and Miko Hughes. After tragedy strikes, a grieving father discovers an ancient burial ground behind his home with powers to raise the dead. What did we do tonight, Judd? What we did, Lois, was a secret. This movie holds a very special spot for me because this is what really started my love for horror. This is the first horror movie that I really clearly remember watching by myself. I had seen a few things that were thrillerish, close to horror, but nothing really straight up horror until I saw this as a young teenager. And it just scared the living hell out of me. There's so many scenes in this that have just burned themselves into my brain. But just the voice and presence of Fred Gwynn is probably the thing that has lasted the longest with me. I just absolutely love that actor, love that character. Just everything about this movie, it has this comfort level to me, but it also feels mysterious and creepy as well. It has shocking and devastating elements to it. And a lot of people would argue that this doesn't hold up to this day, which I really don't agree with. I think it's still well acted and well done. And yeah, it's got that late 80s, early 90s cheesy thing to it, but I think it's still a really enjoyable, entertaining, well done version of a Stephen King novel. I know there's a ton of you guys out there that share the love for this movie with me. But if you're a younger person who have yet to check this out, go in with an open mind and give it a fair chance. Who knows? You might be surprised and actually enjoy it. I want my body back. Come and get it. Freaky is a 2020 comedy horror slasher. Directed by Christopher Landon, it stars Vince Vaughn, Katherine Newton, and Uriah Shelton. A twist on Freaky Friday, the film focuses on a teenage girl who unintentionally switches bodies with a serial killer. So this is another movie that I have a soft spot for. It's a much more recent memory that I made, but in 2020, Everything was going to hell. I'd been locked down, was so miserable and lonely and just bored out of my mind like everybody was, right? Well, there was this small little window where theaters opened again for just a short period of time. And finally, a horror movie came out, something I was excited to see, and I was able to sneak in. The crazy thing is I was in the very last show before the theaters locked up again. And the vast majority of people did not get to see this in a theater. And that really bums me out because this movie, as fun as it is to watch streaming, it was so much fun in a theater because it gives love to so many great horror movies and to the, the genre in general. It's kind of a love letter to it. And it has some brutal, savage kills. It's very funny. Just in general, this is a great little movie with such a hilarious performance by Vince Vaughn, who is just an absolute blast to watch running around like a teenage girl. It is so hilarious, so entertaining. It's one that I think a lot of people are still sleeping on because like I said, when it came out, it just kind of flew under the radar. Some people have seen it when it was on HBO, but it's finally available for free because it is on Amazon Prime, but it's also part of Freebie. So it has limited commercials, but anybody can watch this one. You don't even have to have a Prime membership to watch it. This movie really sums up what I mean when I say popcorn horror. It fits in that category so well because it's fun and entertaining and just a great time. Nothing to take serious. Turn your brain off a little, don't overthink it, and just have fun with it. So do yourself a favor and check it out.
XX is a 2017 anthology horror movie directed by Yovanka Yakovic, Ann Clark, Roxanne Benjamin, and Karen Kasuma. It stars Natalie Brown, Melanie Linsky, Brita Wool, and Christina Kirk. It's a collection of four short horror films written and directed by women. What's in the box? Present. Can I see? Danny, stop being so nosy. It's okay. I had never heard of this and went in completely blind. And I was really surprised because pretty quickly on, I realized what a unique vibe and feel and just look and style this has. Each segment feels very different from the last, but yet they're all pulled together by this really creepy, stylish wraparound, little animated kind of strange thing that just connects one to the next. This isn't really an anthology that has an overall connected story. Everything is really just kind of grouped together and more of a collection than an anthology. But some of the segments in this are absolutely just bone chilling. There's something so weird and uncomfortable about them, just the way the stories are told, the overall vision and style, they just feel moody and absolutely creepy, but they have this very creative, stylish, unique flair to them that made me just excited for each one because it just felt different. And I watch so much content. I go long stretches sometimes without seeing anything that feels different or unique in any way. So to see something well produced and put together in a really great way, but that's also creative and unique is rare. So if you're like me and enjoy horror shorts like the YouTube channel Alter, then I think this is an absolutely fantastic pick. Monsters is a 2010 British sci-fi horror movie. Written and directed by Gareth Edwards, it stars Scoot McNary and Whitney Abel. The movie takes place years after a NASA probe crash lands in Mexico. The story follows a photojournalist who's tasked with escorting his boss's daughter across the infected zone where the monsters reside. All I want is to go back to America. I'm just asking you to help me out here. Very difficult journey, very risky, very dangerous. Do you have the money? To take the risk. This is one of my absolute favorite hidden gem movies. It's been a favorite of mine for a long time, and yet I still very rarely hear anyone that even knows this movie exists. It's really fun, but it's also put together in this really fantastic indie horror way where everything feels real, practical. Even though it's this fantastic concept, it feels very grounded in reality. This feels like something that is really going on in some other universe that is pretty much ours, but with slight differences. Just the way that it's shot, the acting, everything about it, feels very real world. And because of that, it is so easy to get invested into this, to care about the characters and just be on this journey with them. It's also a gorgeous movie with some really breathtaking cinematography. And there's moments where you definitely get to see these creatures and they are fantastic. This is a criminally underrated film and one that I think is an absolute must watch. But if you go check it out and you don't like it, come back here, leave a comment, yell at me, tell me I'm an idiot. No matter what though, I'd love to hear what you think of it. So come back either way and let me know your thoughts. Case 39 is a 2009 supernatural horror movie directed by Christian Albert and stars Renee Zellweger, Jordel Furland, and Bradley Cooper. A social worker thinks she has seen it all until she meets a sweet 10-year-old girl's cruel parents. But soon she finds that dark forces surround this seemingly innocent child. This little girl heard her parents say they're going to send her to hell. I'm scared. So I hadn't seen this movie in many years since it was in theaters well over 10 years ago. So I gave it a rewatch last night and I was pleasantly surprised on how much I still enjoyed it. It's nothing groundbreaking. It's not a game changer or anything like that, 
but it's well performed, well directed, and it's got enough unique qualities to it as far as a an evil or supernatural, demonic exorcism kind of category movie goes that it doesn't feel like all the rest. But it's really the performances by Renee Zellweger and Jordel Furland. They are phenomenal in this. They just go all in, both of them, and it's really something to see because they're back and forth, this kind of cat and mouse game that they play through a huge part of this movie as she's trying to figure out what's going on with this little girl and the little girl just is very tight-lipped and doesn't seem to want to tell her what's the truth on, on anything. It's just so well done and it has this really fun kind of mystery quality to a big chunk of it and then it goes full supernatural crazy towards the end. It's just a fun watch, especially if you don't overthink it. If you try to pick it apart, I'm sure you'll find holes and flaws and all that. But if you just go in to be entertained, I think this is a great pick to definitely check out. I think he's possessed. I really think that he is demonized and possessed. Cropsey is a 2009 true crime horror documentary written and directed by Joshua Zeman and Barbara Branacaccio. The film initially starts out as an examination of Cropsey, a boogeyman-like figure from a New York City urban legend, before ultimately delving into the true horrors that lie at the core. Growing up on Staten Island, Barbara and I had often heard the legend of Cropsey. You're supposed to have a hook and an axe with a knife about this big. Cropsey was the escaped mental patient who lived in the tunnels beneath the old abandoned Willowbrook Mental Institution. If you're a fan of true crime as well as urban legends like I am, this is a fantastic documentary. It isn't like most of the things that I recommend because it's not fantasy, it's not fiction. It is based in reality and it gets to be straight up true crime as it goes. This is also another passion of mine. I love true crime stuff and especially things that delve into the urban legends and stories that we have given to these things that we can't explain that are usually based in reality but they become fantasy as time goes on. But this is well told and produced and just put together masterfully to where it just weaves together both fact and fiction until you kind of get a really good solid look at what the reality is. So if you're looking for a change of pace and you enjoy true crime documentaries like I do, then absolutely give this a look. The Invitation is a 2015 horror movie directed by Karen Kasuma and stars Logan Marshall Green, Michael Hoosman, and John Carroll Lynch. While attending a dinner party at his former house, a man starts to believe that his ex-wife and her new husband have sinister plans for their guest. Bars on windows and no? Security. Safer. You've been acting so suspicious of our hospitality. Well. Jesus. This is such a fantastic movie, and don't get it confused with that trashy movie that came out this past summer called The Invitation, because I'm not a fan of that movie at all. If you watch my worst of 2022 list, it was one of them on there. I just really did not like that movie. But this is a totally different one, very different story, not even anything at all to do with that. They're just very different movies. This The Invitation is fantastic. It's well written, well told. It is a little bit of a slow burn because it's kind of a psychological thriller that just slowly unravels at this core and you start to little by little feel this weird uncomfortableness and you start to think that there is something beneath the surface because at first it just feels like this guy shouldn't be here with his ex-wife and her husband because there's this strange awkwardness to it because her friends and his friends are there and it's just this very strange, awkward setup. And so you're like, hey, this guy just shouldn't be there. That's why it's awkward. But then little by little, you start to go, okay, maybe this guy isn't just tripping. Maybe there is something weird going on here. And it just keeps you guessing all the way into the final act when you finally get this really cool reveal. But if you enjoy psychodramas where there's dread and uncomfortability and things that are slowly devolving into this 
core, then I think you'll absolutely enjoy this one. So definitely give it a look. I'm not gonna go anywhere, sweetheart. What are you? Run, Sweetheart, Run is a 2020 supernatural horror movie. Directed by Shauna Festi, the film stars Ella Belinska and Pillow Asbach. After what seems to be an innocent date, Sherry now faces a night of terror when her date hunts her down and tries to kill her, and now must run for her life throughout the city to evade his grasp. One drink. Okay, what is going on? How is no one still talking about this movie? I know that a lot of people aren't in love with Amazon Prime right now, that's fine. But as far as indie horror goes, this one is absolutely flying under the radar. It's colorful, it's surprising in so many ways. It's got shocking elements, uncomfortable elements, things that are just gonna make you cringe. But it also is just so surprising. There's there's a layer to this, and I'm trying not to give away, that'll really catch you off guard. It's a very different movie than what I think most people think it's gonna be. It's not just a simple rape, revenge, you know, escape, you know, running away from this horrible monster guy. It's very different than that. But it's funny in a dark humored way. It's exciting. It's gory as all hell. Lots and lots of blood. It's cringy and uncomfortable and full of dread. It's got so many layers to it. I think it's very, very entertaining. And I think it's a perfect movie for your Saturday night. So do yourself a favor, grab your popcorn and your candy and enjoy. That's going to do it for me today. If you enjoyed this content, please hit that subscribe button and ding the little bell because that really helps out this channel so much. I also want to give a huge, massive, enormous thank you to the Ghost Pirate Army, to you guys over on Patreon, because you guys mean so, so much to me. And if you'd like to find out how you can become a part of the army and support this channel, there's a link down in the description. And like always, thank you so much for watching. Please crush that like button. And remember guys, Horror can be fun! If you enjoyed this, click right here to see 10 amazing movies over on Netflix. And I'll see you guys next time.